ओम वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटी समप्रभा निर्विघ्न कुर मे देवा सर्वकार्यु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिनी विद्यारंभम क्या सिद्धिर्भव मे सदा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेशर गुरुरव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम हरिओम एंड गुड इवनिंग फ्रॉम नायग्रो फॉल्स वन वी आर स्टडिंग इन आर आश्रम इन स्वामी तेजुमायन इन द फेल्थ दैट वी आर लर्निंग सो मच येट इन आर माइंड वी आर इंसर्टिंग द वर्ड बट that vedantic um swear word but he shared this story with us there's a certain bush that grows in the desert and this desert grows needles on its stalk on its leaves to prevent camels from or any other animal from consuming it its defense mechanism and as these camels are taken into the desert the riders the owners keep trying to steer the camels away from this bush but they keep going to the bush and when they would chew on this bush those needles would pierce its tongue its gums its its lips and there would be blood coming from the camel's mouth and that camel would ingest all of its own blood thinking that it's the rasa the nectar the the essence that's coming from those plants and why swami tejumayana that was sharing this with us he said our interaction with the world is the same way we keep going after pleasure possession position thinking that we're getting peace but all that's happening is that we're hurting ourselves and if there is any peace where is it coming from ourselves when we are steady with dukkha viyoga dukkha is dependency sorrow viyoga is to separate ourselves to extract ourselves from such a circumstance when we are steady with this then we become sincere with sukha samyoga we become sincere with wanting to be peaceful and the evolution of wanting to be peaceful is needing to be peaceful there is a significant difference between wanting water and needing water wanting food and needing food too many of us want to be happy and that's why we're we're it's indicative that we're still stuck in that dukkha but when we need to be happy we're shifting to that sukha connecting this to our studies from last week puja swami chinmayananda is famous for his happiness quotient how many of you have heard of the happiness quotient before okay here's what this quotient is in simple terms the numerator is desires fulfilled and the denominator is desires entertained so fulfilled over 
entertained. And if you think of your education, if you think of our society, we are learning to focus on increasing the numerator. Fulfill more desires. Go to Las Vegas, you can have all of your desires fulfilled in one place. But it's interesting, that's how what is proclaimed, but what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. So what kind of desires do you have? <laughs> Whereas our ashrams, our shastras, this course is teaching us not to focus on the numerator, but the denom denominator. Instead of trying to grow the numerator, we should reduce, shrink, minimize the denominator. So putting this into a case, if I have five desires fulfilled and 10 entertained, that's a 50% ratio of happiness. But if I start to reduce the denominator, and I have five desires fulfilled over five entertained, and that's much more happiness. What if I divide five over zero? What does that equal? Undefined mathematically, but philosophically it means infinite happiness. If the desire is fulfilled, good. And if the de desire is not fulfilled, also good. It's much more efficient and effective. In our lives, when we focus on the numerator <coughs> for every desire fulfilled, what happens? Ten more are entertained. Contentment. For those in the Bhagavad Gita course, this is what we're focusing on. Chapter 2 is a summary of the remaining 15 chapters. Because chapter 18 becomes a summary again. So one chapter is really the essence of those 15 chapters. And the message is, be content. You are what you're seeking. What you need is yourself. Only the everlasting can provide us happiness that is everlasting. Think about it logically. How can that which is never lasting provide you everlasting happiness? It's completely illogical. So stop being a camel. <laughs> that would be like our inside Moha Mudgara uh, course like joke and, and so on. So when we see each other, are you being a camel right now? Stop being a camel. <laughs> Gain and loss are terms used in the never lasting realm. Never lasting means sometimes it's gained and if it's gained, it will be lost. And if it's lost, there's a possibility for that to be gained again. But for that which is everlasting, these games are not applicable. How do we know if we're becoming more content? We know we're becoming more content because we take the minimum from our surroundings. And we give the maximum. That's how you know you're being content. And if you take the maximum and give the minimum, that shows us that we are kripanaha, kanjus, misers. And in our last shloka, we studied that someone who's content, someone who's fully content, they are balavat. What does bala mean? Like a child. They are unmatavat, like a mad person. <laughs> They are pishachavat. They are like ghosts. <laughs> In other words, if I can simply put what these three types of people are, they don't have any emotional baggage. If kids get mad at you, they get unmad at you very quickly. And mad people, I'm assuming, are the same way. <laughs> are the same way. And I'm certainly assuming ghosts are the same way. I don't have too much empathy with, with that demographic. But again, I'm giving you an indicator of how you know if you're becoming more childlike, more mad, more ghostly, <laughs> is if you have less 
emotional baggage. We continue. Yesterday I received a message um, through LinkedIn from a lady who's heard me speak a few times in a certain city. And she was telling me that her and her daughter were at a grocery store and they were selling Girl Guide cookies. And there was other girls there and their parents also. And a lady came to this general area and said that I would like to buy a box of these cookies. So this lady's daughter gave her this box and she hit that box down and I said, I don't want that box of cookies from you. This lady was an Indian, the daughter was Indian, Indian origin. I want this box of cookies from her, pointing to a girl who was not of Indian origin. And that really hurt that mother, that really hurt that daughter and even all of the people there, even the people who were not of Indian origin were really shocked by this experience. And yesterday when I was driving from Pittsburgh, I was listening to a certain insight by Bernie Sanders. He was talking about the address to the Congress that uh, President Trump recently made. And he brought up a lot of victims and those victims were made victims by what he labeled as illegal immigrants. And what Bernie Sanders pointed out is, what about the people who were shot in South Carolina by Native Americans? What about the person who was killed in Kansas, also killed by a Native American? When we don't live deeply, we only see part of the picture, and when you see part of the picture, there's more division. And we think we're right, so we go deeper into that division. But when we live deeply, we see a fuller picture beyond someone's origin. That a victim is a victim, and you treat all victims with that same empathy, not just some victims that are conducive to your cause. And I share this because more is going to happen. I don't mean to be a pessimist, but more will happen. And all of us have to be proactive in making ourselves stronger, the people around us. And that's not going to happen by going to the gym only. You should go to the gym, <laughs> but not just going to the gym. You have to lead yourself. You have to lift yourself. This is what Vishnu Gupta taught this ordinary child. You think the world is going to look after you? You think that king is going to take care of you? You need to make yourself extraordinary. And that comes from understanding or vision, which comes from knowledge. It's a divine knowledge that you and I are studying. Now, past 20 weeks we've been studying. We are making ourselves stronger. So stay inspired, not just for yourself, but for that girl who couldn't give that lady a girl guide cookie box and other incidents that will happen. We are on Shloka 23. Please repeat after me. And for those who have read ahead, which is nobody, so this will be a surprise to all of you, this is a shloka that we've really studied already. And for those near a computer and those who have read ahead, what shloka is this like? What number? You didn't think I was going to ask. You should be prepared, vigilant. You figure it out, okay? And you can only have one guess, not one. You get no response from me. So two, no response from me. From three, See if you can figure out what shloka this is like that we've already studied. Kastvam koham kuta ayataha. Kame janani ko me tataha. Iti pari bhavaya sarva masaram. Vishwam tyaktva swapna vicharam. 
भज गोविंद भज गोविंद गोविंद भज मूडमते यस दिस इज लाइक श्लोक नंबर एट सो ऑल दोज सेंटर्स हु had enough people to quickly go through each shloka to find the right one having many people in your study group helps kaha twam who are you kaha aham who am i kuta ayata where have i come from and wherever that is indicated it also means where am i going that's all inclusive in such terminology who are you who am i where have we come from where have we where are we going did you ask yourself these questions today and if you did ask someone who are you they probably started to describe their body maybe their mind maybe their intellect it's an application all we do is exchange applications tell us your height and weight tell us what your schooling is tell us who you voted for you know on and on and on bmi 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 acharya shankar is asking us to ask these questions and keep asking these questions till you can't ask this question so if i say who am i body and then i ask again who am i and i can go deeper then i have to go deeper and you keep on going till you cannot go deeper that's who you are that's who i am if i go to the depth where have i come from a part of me has come a part of me will go but the infinite part can't come and can't go so the question's not relevant it's not applicable don't you love applications where you can put that na there not applicable i love those applications when i used to give my blood I guess I can do so again because I didn't go to Bharat this past year. And there's a section about pregnancy or have you been pregnant this and that and I love just put a line down there. Don't have to answer any of those questions. <laughs> In the next line, Acharya Shankara says, "Ka me janani." Who is my mother? Ka sorry, ko me tataha. Who is my father? and do you think he's asking this in a literal sense <laughs> tell us your mother's maiden name tell us what village your father is born in what difference does it make but if you do take this literally what acharya shankara is asking us to do his disciples asking us to do is to be humble i'll, I'll elaborate in shloka i believe it's 61 and 62 or it could be 62 and 63 of chapter 2 of shrimad bhagavad gita bhagwan krishna shares the ladder of fall where we go from being who we are to self destruction there are eight rungs that fall and i'm going to be brief about these to help you remember these I've clubbed these as D's and A's, alternating D's and A's. So the first rung that we fall to is being distracted. The first D is being distracted. Like a ball going down the stairs. If you catch it there, very good. You come back. But if you don't catch it there, it goes to the A. Being attached. Whatever you're being distracted by, if you don't check yourself, you become attached T- takes us to the next d which is being desirous when you are desirous you have to get what you want you can't stop it anymore it's just a different timeline whether you do it now or later it takes us to the next a you have a whole lot of desires but other people also desire that one of you is going to get it and if it's not you what a comes in anger being angry distracted attached desirous and angry and that's just four rungs down we have four more to go 
Once we are angry, it takes us to the next D, we become deluded. You've all heard of horror stories of how people speak or act when they're angry. When I say you've all heard, I'm politely saying you've all experienced horror stories <laughs> in what you're saying or acting when you're angry. Being angry, deluded. After being deluded is being amnesic. Amnesic means you forget your role, your responsibilities. And here is where Acharya Shankara says in his commentary on these shlokas, someone who is deluded, someone who is amnesic, forgets their parents, forgets their teachers. They forget Matra Devo Bhava, Pitra Devo Bhava, Acharya Devo Bhava. And so there is no level of Atiti Devo Bhava. They just keep fighting. Because everyone is separate. They don't even feel one with their parents or acharyas. And still two more rungs to go. Should I stop? Are you scared? No, no, tell us more. Tell, describe us and, and who we are. After being amnesic is being devolved. Being devolved means you look like a human, but you start to... Think and bark, not speak. You start to bark <laughs> and act like an animal. And then finally, the last day is to be annihilated. The opportunity to free oneself, instead one has annihilated themselves. And how did it all start? Being distracted. A very dangerous trend that is growing in us and the people around us. So here Acharya Shankar, <coughs> Shankar's disciple is saying, remember your parents, and only when you remember your biological parents will you be trained to remember their parents and their parents and their parents. And finally, you remember the original parent. Janani is another name for Mother Parvati, for Mother Lakshmi. Tataha is another name for Bhagavan Krishna, Bhagavan Shiva. In the next line, Iti Pari Bhavaya Sarvamasaram. Pari Bhavaya means feel, not just lightly, Pari Bhavaya, deeply feel, Sarvam, all around you, all within you, a Sara. Upadesha Sara, a text by Sri Ramana, the essence of advice. Vedanta Sara, it is the essence of Vedanta. Acharya Shankara is saying, all around you, all within you, these worlds are a Saram, they are essenceless. Now, why is this? Because they are not the source of existence or awareness or joy. I'm sitting on a stage right now. Is this stage the source of existence? Did existence come from this stage? Awareness? Joy? Anyone who sits on this stage is joyous. You should come here then. This will be the best ashram. You just have to sit here. <laughs> it's not. This is not the source of Satchirananda. And not just the stage. I also said what's going on within us. The breath, the mind, the intellect, the ego. This is all asada. They're not independently existent, aware, or joyous. Why is it? that we are begging from beggars. None of these have joy. Then why are you asking joy of that which doesn't have joy? Seems extremely foolish. Extreme, seems extremely, extremely mudha mate. See, we're identifying empathy with, with what's being shared. Vishwam 
त्यक्तवा विश्व मीन्स यूनिवर्स और मल्टीवर्स दैट इंक्लूड्स ऑल दैट्स फार अवे नियर बाय इन साइड त्यक्तवा स्टॉप डिपेंडिंग ऑन ऑल ऑफ दिस हाउ स्वप्न विचार you should reflect that all around you all within you all of this is a dream a swapna this frightens a lot of people that the people around you are a dream <laughs> have you seen that episode of the fresh prince of bel air where carlton and will they're trying to take something from this very heavy man and he's sleeping and they end up waking him up <laughs> and carlton's moving his arms like this saying this is all a dream this is all a dream <laughs> whenever i hear you know this is all a dream i always go back <laughs> to that that imagery of Carl, carlton dancing and then will hits him and says you know he's awake right now but carlton's still going this is a dream this is a dream when you are dreaming you create the multiverse and you experience the multiverse isn't it and get the last dream that you had so can you definitively tell me that you're not dreaming right now go to sleep <laughs> i don't have to instruct you in that <laughs> when you sleep what happens to space what happens to time what happens to matter Isn't it so frustrating when frustrating when you <coughs> sleep and then your alarm clock goes off and it's time to wake up and you feel like you just closed your eyes. But 8 hours have passed. <laughs> 10 hours have passed. What happens to time? You see, space, time and matter depend on you. You pull them back when you're asleep and you bring them back when you're awake. you and i'm saying you i mean your nature is sat chit ananda you bestow existence awareness joy on all around you and all within you all around you all within you depend on you you do not depend by nature on that which is around you and that which is within you I know sometimes this is um esoteric for some people abstract a practical way to experience this I do this regularly in my day and it's some of the most powerful moments that I experience it's when you separate you from you whatever you are you are able to separate a part of you and begin to watch the other part forget about the labels who's watching who but there is a, a separation there you're watching yourself watch you're watching yourself interact and when you're able to make that separation this all becomes much more dreamlike much more drama like it becomes a sadam then you feel independent and all of this is iti iti means an object did i make it more esoteric than <laughs> abstract <laughs> okay if i did that's stri <coughs> stricken from the records even though what i'm saying is right if you just slow down if you shift from being busy to being engaged just slow down and when we slow down we begin to experience our experiences as they are rather than the emotional baggage or mind games that we play with all of this see when we're distracted we fall when we're busy we fall just think about you sitting in class right now many of you got to class right as i was chanting my prayers wasn't it is what you did today so fundamental was it so aligned with independence 
when I had traveled to Rishikesh, I went to Swami Shivananda's ashram. The same Swami Shivananda's ashram where our Puja Swami Chinmayananda lived and studied. And there they have a room in the ashram where they've been doing Akanda Japa for decades, I think like 50 years. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. The Maha Mantra has been chanted there for like 50 years. And when you walk into this room, even if you're so distracted, you can't help but bring that distraction to that mantra. That Akanda, the unbrokenness, that lineage, bestows power. What Acharya Shankara's Shishya is asking us to do is to engage in Akanda Vichara. Unbroken reflection. Nitya, Sada, Nitaram. We have to be reflective in every experience. And when we do, Dukkha, Viyoga, Sukha, Samyoga will happen naturally. We will treat this whole Vishwam as Iti. And with Iti comes Na Iti. Neti, Neti, Neti. I am not going to depend on you, and I'm not going to depend on this, and I'm not going to depend on that. I am independent. Oh.